The Creality K1 Max is everything I've ever wanted from a 3D printer. It's fast, it's good quality, it's large format, and it's very reliable. It's quite rare to find consumer technology which is still innovating at a breakneck speed. Artificial intelligence, for instance, and 3D printers. In fact, how about a 3D printer with artificial intelligence? The Creality K1 Max is a large format, super high speed printer based on a Core XY design and equipped with an advanced LiDAR scanning system for AI leveling, flow rate control and anomaly detection. And spoiler alert, it is every bit as awesome as it sounds. The K1 Max arrives almost completely assembled inside of a wooden crate. You just need to screw on the door handle, the filament holder, and attach the screen. Basically, anything that sticks out on the sides that would have made shipping difficult. But critically, there are also three screws that need to be removed from inside. These are indicated with a large yellow arrow, and there are multiple warning stickers, so you really can't miss them. After powering on, setting up your network through either Wi-Fi or Ethernet is easy. You'll then run through a self-check, which takes about 10 minutes. The bulk of this test is imperceptible as to what it's actually doing. It's shown as input shaping, and I assume it's something to do with the LiDAR and making minute adjustments to the bed. It kind of reminds me of that scene in Rick and Morty where Rick spends days perfectly leveling his piece of ground in the garage. <laughs> Uh, all right, come on. Generally, with auto leveling, you'd see nine or even 81 points of moving the head up and down the print bed. But the K1 Max is equipped with, as I mentioned, a much more advanced LiDAR, similar to the way an iPhone can do accurate 3D measurements of your face for face unlock. It fires out hundreds of laser dots and measures accurately the distortion between them. So that's combined with the standard 25 point auto leveling inductive sensor. And as far as I can tell, it works really well. I've never had a first layer problem yet. So as mentioned, the K1 Max is a core XY printer, but what is that and why does it matter? Up until now, most printers were known as Cartesian in which one motor or a pair of motors drives one axis. So you have the X motor moving the X axis, the Y motor moving the Y axis, etc. It's pretty simple to understand. A Core XY printer, on the other hand, uses two motors operating in unison for both the X and the Y axis at once. Essentially, each motor controls a diagonal, simultaneously moving both the X and Y coordinates of the print head. The upshot of this and why it matters is that you can move quicker and more precisely. The build plate also doesn't move laterally on this. Instead, it only needs to descend as the layers build up, which has more in common with a resin printer than a standard 3D printer, meaning you can get a larger build volume because the bed doesn't have to move around with a smaller machine footprint and more precise printing. Usually you'd need twice as much depth on your desktop as you would the print bed size because the print bed itself moves back and forwards. So not so with this, as you can see, it's extremely compact despite having a 30 centimeters cubed print volume, which is large enough to print this human sized Moroni mannequin head I found on printables. Now it is loud. There's a large fan on the side plus a hot end fan. Uh, combined, you're looking about 70 to 75 dB when it's running at full whack. Not a problem for me. I've since moved everything out here to my garage workshop, so it's not going to cause any noise issues. But if you had this in your office or bedroom, it could get annoying very quickly. The K1 Max is also equipped with a small strip of LED lighting from the front. However, as you can see at the moment, they're not as bright as I'd have thought. On a clear sunny day, you probably won't even notice them. It is actually on at the moment. Unlike, say, the Snapmaker Artisan, which has every inch of support beams covered in LED lights and can act as an ambient light for your entire room, the Creality K1 Max has just enough to be able to see the model in the dark or low light. And while it's not as impressive to show off on video, it does the job. It's sufficient. While the K1 Max should eventually be compatible with other slicers, right now it doesn't have any other profiles available. So you will need to download Creality Print for the desktop or even use Creality Cloud Printing from the smartphone app. But I think that's unlikely. If you're spending this much on a printer, 
So let's exclusively discuss the desktop app. Creality Print is surprisingly good, if a little bare bones uh, compared to some apps. The configuration options initially displayed aren't as in-depth as I'd like, but you can go in and modify them, uh, including the ability to use, say, tree supports, which is the organic style branching structures that everyone is raving about nowadays. In addition, the app offers comprehensive remote monitoring and the ability to print over the local network or via your cloud account. So it doesn't matter where you're doing your slicing. I can be over in the house or I can be here next to the printer. It'll all work just the same. Mostly I've been using the LAN printing option and I haven't had to touch a USB stick at all, even though there is a USB port on the front if you want to use that. So that's a very much welcome. But I also regularly use the smartphone app to check on how the print is going just before bed. I mentioned the overall impressive speed of printing. And while the actual print speed itself is incredible, I think the speed of the experience is also helped a lot by how easy it is from a software perspective. This is certainly not the first 3D printer I've seen with remote printing functionality, but it is the best so far. The one click print option once you've sliced is just superb. The remote monitoring on the desktop app gives you full controls over the settings. Basically anything you could do on the front touch panel can be done here on a desktop app instead. You also get a live preview window of what's going on through the included webcam on the side. And you can send the same print job to multiple printers at the same time. So if you're running a print farm, this might be a killer feature for you. As well as, of course, the ridiculously high print speeds, four to five times faster than your average printer at up to 600 millimeters per second. I mentioned the touchscreen. It's a full color, uh, four inch-ish, very easy to use touch panel. And though you can't do live Z adjustments, as I said, I actually haven't found the need to yet. The LiDAR combined with the bed leveling works perfectly. Now, I will say that reading around the user and Reddit forums for Creality, it seems there were some teething problems with the K1 Max, and understandably they delayed our review model for a few months while those kinks were worked out. And from what I can tell, any bugs and issues were corrected, and new parts sent out where needed to the early customers. So what we have here is not one of those earlier prototypes, but rather a refined version, maybe a version two, I don't know, that's being sold now. But for me, overall, my experience with the Creality K1 Max has been one of absolute satisfaction. It's fast, but it also produces remarkably accurate and good quality prints. I haven't had any major issues yet. It's just printed sort of every bit as well as I'd hoped for me. And that makes for a relatively boring review. I'd have to point out a bunch of flaws with the device, the classic mid-review twist of why you should reconsider buying this, why it might not work for you. But I can't. Like all 3D printers, you might have bad prints and every filament is gonna be different. I can't say I've had any issues with the different filaments I've tried. Mostly I've been using Hyper PLA, which is specifically designed to extrude easier at high speed. Now I will say that I found Hyper PLA was perhaps more sensitive to moisture. Uh, a couple of days in this fairly humid garage were enough to make it go brittle and snap. So I've since put it within a uh, dehumidifier filament dryer box thing and it's been fine. Overhangs may still need tweaking. You know, you're gonna get slightly rougher surfaces where supports aren't attached properly, but these aren't limitations of the K1 Max, they're just limitations of FDM printers, period. That's inherent to the technology. It's nothing I can fault to this printer. So are there any specific downsides to the K1 Max? It's only a single color printer. There's no multi-material options at the moment. So if that's important to you, look elsewhere. Of course, you can still do the trick of pausing it and changing filament midway, but that's a little bit awkward. It may be direct drive, but it still has a Bowden tube to feed the filament into the case. So after plenty of printing with Hyper PLA, I wanted to try regular PLA too. And my first port of call was the included Benchy, which is specifically designed for Hyper PLA. And it prints at a ludicrously high speed, about 15 minutes total. And in this case, I made no adjustments to the standard profile here. It was the same print test file uh, with calibration at the start. And it came out pretty well, as well as the original model did in Hyper PLA. Now that's not to say you should, as a matter of course, print this fast with regular PLA filaments. 
I slowed it down and used standard PLA profile for the next items that I printed. And obviously, I don't want to say that Hyper PLA is the same as regular PLA. I'm sure it's actually not. But in my experience, the printer handled both fine. So don't feel like you're confined to only using Hyper PLA. As it is, Creality have produced a stunningly good large format printer that for most people should work right out of the box with minimal, if any, tweaks. There is almost zero construction needed, zero manual leveling or adjustment of the print bed. It just works. And I cannot tell you how nice it is to just have a printer like in the movies where I can drag a file in and click print. I've printed more in a month or so with this than I have in a year with other printers purely because it's so fast and so reliable. I printed this entire Hextraction board game. I printed this human head, this Groot plant pot, this dice tower. I printed tons of little trays for board game accessories to be stored in. I printed all the things. So thanks to Creality for making my 3D printing dreams finally come true. So um, I guess we're done. Pack up folk, we can go home now. This is it, this is the one. If you want a big, reliable, fast 3D printer, get the Creality K1 Max. Until next time, I've been James Bruce. You've been watching MakeYourself.com Reviews. Happy making.